Well, we haven't really repositioned other than that Shadow has walked. She's moved quite far south from where we last had her. So she's now up a different termite mound and all we've got is a tail. That's all we can really see at this stage. She's completely flat there. And the bad news is that she's not walking very well at all. So she looks like she's got a sore front paw that she's hobbling a little bit on. So I think that's why she's a little bit skinny. She's probably had a, a little bit of an issue the last few days. Hopefully it will be okay. I can't see any sign of a wound or anything like that. But she certainly doesn't, is not walking with any comfort whatsoever. So hopefully it will just be something that will eventually disappear and we won't have to worry about too much but she certainly is a tired cat now that she's up on the mound she's taking it very easy and you can see she's gone flat there's her head on the other side there just having a little bit of a nap the thing is is that even though her front paw is is sore and the way that she's walking looks horrific it doesn't look good she actually managed to scale this mound as though she was a normal leopard so i think it's more a fact that maybe she's got a a thorn inside there or something that's causing a little bit of distress and it'll eventually go away and she'll be okay because if this if I tell you this mound is very tall it's not a small mound at any stretch of the imagination and it takes a lot of effort for anybody to get up there it's steep and so if she can get up there then she's still able to move around when it counts so she'll still be able to go after food if she needs to and be able to hunt if she needs to so it's not that big an issue just yet i don't think but i'm warning you if she does walk that it does doesn't look as good as it should she's not even putting weight on that front right leg at the moment so hopefully it will just be a minor thing and eventually it will dissipate and she'll be okay it's never nice when you see these kind of things and it's always something that us as guides is, is probably one of the hardest things about being out here when you see an animal that's in a little bit of discomfort but it is nature she doesn't like i say have anything that's on her foot or around her leg or anything like that so the interesting part about it is we were chatting to some of the trackers that were tracking her yesterday and they were saying that her tracks were normal yesterday there was no sign of any injury yesterday she wasn't hobbling because when a leopard hobbles if it it will drag one of its feet and it becomes actually quite noticeable in the tracks so there was no sign of that yesterday which means that it either happened during the day today or it happened last night and so that's why I think it must be a potential thorn in the foot or maybe she just sprained it slightly when she was chasing after something just a little and so today is about resting and keeping that foot up and not getting too much pressure on it and then as it starts to heal up she'll be all right again so hopefully that's going to be the case either way it took a lot of effort for her to get up on top of this mound and hoping that she decides just to rest up for the day and the evening here and then starts again tomorrow with a foot that hopefully is feeling a little bit better. Toby, you're asking if the leopard ladies all get along. Toby, not necessarily. So you'll find that even Shadow, if she comes across Tundi, who is her sister, will most certainly be aggressive towards her and the reason why is because she's now a territorial animal that's that bond between her and her sister is broken there's no longer that bond anymore she's now severed that bond and so they now compete for territory they fight with one another they make sure that they try and keep one another um, at bay because they're trying to protect resources so den sites food items water availability and so they will be highly aggressive towards each other we saw it the other day with shongile and tingana and tandi when shongile was there um, we we're speaking to the guys at saw it that tingana and tandi's presence made shongile feel very uncomfortable and you'll find that tandi would have probably been more aggressive towards her than what tingana would have been and so females definitely will fight with one another given the chance It's amazing the camouflage though and you can see why sometimes these cats are very difficult to spot if you are on a road you would struggle to see that on top of the mound it, her spots blend in absolutely perfectly and there's that long tail is the only thing that would give it away otherwise you would have to really look hard to see any sign of this particular individual Now a lot of you are wondering where the cub is, I'm not 100% sure, the tracks for the cub was inside here with her, um, just no sign of the cub, she hasn't contacted call, she hasn't contact called the cub yet, but there was fresh tracks this morning of that cub, so hopefully 
the cub is around here somewhere and maybe as the sun starts to dip she'll start calling and the little cubby will come out and we'll be able to spend some time with it but she most certainly hasn't called or, or made any sort of vocalizing noises to to bring the cub in and we certainly haven't seen any sign of the cub other than the footprints that were around this morning that were from last night crossing into this area so the cub seems to be in fine fettle because the tracks that we had this morning was it running all over the place up and down the road and so that one seems to be fine i'm sure it's just lying down somewhere enjoying a bit of shade and shadow will hopefully call it out a little bit later It'd be interesting to know just how big Shadow's cub has gotten. It's been a few weeks or months since we've seen that cub and it will be interesting to see the size difference between when we last saw it and now because if it's already getting close to eight months then it means that that cub will be quite a lot bigger than when we last saw it and it, it will go through a quick growth spurt now towards a year. We know that Shongile caught a massive growth spurt from her sort of nine ten months to just over a year she's grown quite a lot since then so i'm sure shadow's little cub will also do the same but there we go that's camouflage for you quite clearly so xavier you're wondering what the most common prey item is for the leopards of the sabi sands well in this area most commonly they're going after impalas that's pretty much what they target mostly just given that there's a high percentage of impalas here they will also go frequently for dacre and steenbok and then also birds mongoose and varying other things but impala seems to be the top of the menu for when it comes to a leopard and like i say it's because of the amount of um, impalas that are here it just means that that's the easiest animal generally to find so that's why they spend a lot of time hunting those now I think a lot of people are struggling to be able to see shadow there's other vehicles and I'm just listening to the guides trying to explain where exactly she is but I don't think they can see her because she's lying in a way that if with the Sun is very tough to actually see her on top there unless you're at our angle where the tail is easily visible but that's one sleepy cat that's for sure It's also a great place for it to hide. It's got a little bit of grass on top there. It allows it then to be sort of hidden. So even if there are animals around, she can see what's going on and be able to notice and still hide away on top. So it's a perfect mound for a female leopard to, or a leopard in general, to be sitting. There we go. She's just popped her head up now. That's much better. Oh no, back down again. Are you using the grass like a pillow, Shadow? You clever girl. Right, now, we're sitting with Shadow, and it's all thing leopardy, and so while we sit with her, let's go back to Tara, who I believe is now engrossed in a very in-depth conversation about genetics and, well, leopards as a species.